Consider the box plot below. What quarter has the smallest spread of data? It's the third quartile, and here's how you know. We have a whole uh, range of values representing a sample. And to help me explain this, I'm going to pretend that this sample has 100 values in it, 100 observations, even though we're not told how many is in the sample here. We will just use 100 because it's easy to understand percentages with 100. So if you have 100 values, then you know there are 100 observations or 100 values between 6, the minimum, and 26, the maximum. 6 being the lowest value in the sample and 26 being the largest value in the sample, the minimum and the maximum. Then, if you spread out all of those values, those 100 data points, from least to greatest, and split them up into quarters, you would have 25 of the observations would fall between 6 and 10, 25 of them would fall between 10 and 19, 25 of them would fall between 19 and 21, and 25 of them would fall between 21 and 26, right? So there's, there's 100 values in the sample, and there's 25 values in the first quarter, which is divided by the first quartile. The dividing line is the value 10. So there are 25% of the data that would be less than 10, so 25 values if you have a sample of 100. Then we would have another 25 values between 10 and 19 in the second quarter, quarter divided by the quartile, the second quartile, which is also referred to as the 50th percentile because 50% of the data lies below it. Likewise, the first quartile would also be considered the 25th percentile because 25% of the values lie below it. Then we have 21, which is the third quartile, separating the bottom 75% or the bottom three quarters. And there would be 25 values in between 19 and 21. And then our fourth quarter has 25 values between 21 and 26. Now, when we're asked about spread, we want to know the range of each quarter, right? So the spread of the first quarter is 4 because if you subtract 10 minus 6, you get a distance or a difference of 4. So the bottom 25 values lie within four units, a spread of four. The second 25 values lie between 10 and 19 with a spread of nine. The third 25 values lie between 19 and 21 with a spread of two. And the fourth quarter has a spread of 5. So there's 25 val values with a spread of 5. Which is why we answered the third quarter. And we were asked what quarter has the smallest spread of data. And that spread is 2. Then what quarter has the largest spread of data, we can quickly see visually, that it would be the second quarter with a spread of 9. Then we find the interquartile range by getting the width of the box. So the interquartile range, which is defined in the book and in the reference packet I've provided, says that you get the interquartile range by subtracting Q3 
the third quartile, in this case 21, minus the first quartile, which in this case is 10. So 21 minus 10 gives us an uh, interquartile range of 11. Which interval has the most data in it? Now notice it does not say which quarter has the most data in it because each quarter has the same number of data points falling within that range. But the intervals given below are not all um, the boundaries of qu quarters. So um, if you look at the first option, 21 to 26, that's the fourth quarter. So there's 25 values there. Also, the last option, 10 to 18, that is, um, oh, sorry, I meant to say, what was I going to look at? 6 to 10 next. 6 to 10, that is also one quarter. So this interval from 6 to 10 and this interval from 21 to 26, they each have 25 values in them if you have 100 values in the sample. Same number of values in those two quarters. Now, 19 to 22 and 10 to 18 are not just the boundaries of a quarter. So let's look. 19 to 22 is more than one quarter, right? Because 19 to 21 would represent 25 values, but we're going a little beyond it. So that's more than 25 values in this, in the interval from 19 to 22. Then um, from 10 to 18, 10 to 19 would be a whole quarter, but it's just falling a little short at stopping at 18. So this one has less data in it than a quarter, right? So um, the answer is 19 to 22 because it's the only one, the only interval given that represents more than one quarter of the data. So again, with my example of 100 values in a sample, that would be more than 25 values. And the other options um, all have less than that. And part G, what value could represent the 52nd percentile? Um, I don't like that TH there, but it should say 52nd ND. But, uh, 52nd percentile means it would divide the lower 52% of the data. So that should be close to the 50th percentile. In other words, the median. It should be a little bit above the median because the median is the 50th percentile. So the median is 19. Therefore, the 52nd percentile would have to be larger than 19. But it also can't be 21 or any higher because 21 would represent the 75th percentile or the third quartile. So we know we, were, we are looking for a value that is larger than 19 but less than 21. So the answer, the best answer here, the only one that lies between 19 and 21 is 20.